In the previous video, we discussed deadlock prevention whereby in validating any one of the four necessary conditions, the system takes care that the deadlock is prevented. In this video, we are going to take a look at the deadlock avoidance algorithms. Now these algorithms, they require that the system has a priori information of the resources which would be required by the processes. So here each process has to declare the maximum number of resources of each type it may need and this declaration it has to make before execution. So now before a process begins it declares how many maximum number of resources of each type it will require and this, is, this information is used by the system to avoid deadlock. Any time a process requests for a resource, the algorithm will examine the resource allocation state to ensure that whether there would be a condition for deadlock or not. So what is this resource allocation state? The resource allocation state is defined by the number of available resources which are the resources available in the system, the allocated resources, the resources which are currently allocated to the process and what are the maximum demands of process. So any time when a particular process requests for a resource and if that resource is granted then the resource allocation state might change. So whenever a process is requesting for an available resource, system must decide if this allocation of the resource will leave the system in a safe state or will it lead the system to an unsafe state. That means any time a process is requesting for a resource, the system will check whether the allocation of the resource will it lead to a deadlock or not. So what is a safe state? Now the system is in a safe state if there exists a sequence P1 to Pn of all the n processes in the system such that for each Pi the resources that Pi can still request can be satisfied by the currently available resources of Pi plus the resources held by all Pj with j less than i. So what does this mean? Pi is having some resources. So it is already holding some resources but it might require new resources. So then if this Pi it requires new resources, it requires additional resources, then can this request be satisfied by the available resources in the system as well as all the resources which are being held by all the processes which are earlier to it in the sequence. So all PJs where J is less than I, all the res when they finish their execution, they will release the resources and using those resources plus the currently available resources can the request of PI be entertained. Now if the resource which PI requires is not immediately available, then PI can wait until all PJ have finished. So if PI has requested for some resource and it cannot be satisfied by the currently available resources, then PI will wait till all PJ which are the processes earlier to it in the safe sequence, they have finished and what happens when these processes finish? Any PJ when it finishes, it will release its resources. So PI can obtain the needed resources, it will execute and then it will return all the resources which were allocated to it and terminate. And when PI terminates, then the next process which is in the sequence PI plus 1 can obtain its required resources and so on. So as long as a sequence of these processes exist such that the requirements of each process can be fulfilled 
by the currently available resources and the resources being held by the earlier processes, then we say that the system is in the safe state. So if the system is in the safe state, then there is no possibility of a deadlock because a safe sequence exists and the requirement of each process can be satisfied. But if the system is in an unsafe state, that means that sequence of processes does not exist, then there is a possibility of a deadlock. So the deadlock avoidance algorithms, they will ensure that a system will never enter an unsafe state. So let's take an example over here. So we have a system with 12 resources and let's say these are of the same instance. Uh, these are 12 instances of the same resource type and there are three processes P0, P1 and P2. P0 requires a maximum of 10 resources. P1 may need 4 resources and P2 may need 9 resources. So this declaration has already been made by the processes before they begin their execution. So this is the a priori information which is now available with the system that the processes might need a maximum of these resources and the total resources which are there in the system are 12. Now at time t0, let's say p0 is holding 5 resources. That means 5 resources have already been allocated to it. So for p0, the current allocation is 5, but the maximum that it requires is 10. It can require 5 more. So there is a possibility that this p0 might need 5 more resources sometime in the future when it is executing. P1 is currently holding 2 resources. So it is the current allocation is 2 but the, its maximum requirement is 4. So there is a possibility that it might need 2 more resources when it is executing. For P2 the maximum was 9 and it is already holding 2. So there is a possibility that it can require 7 more. Now if we look at the current allocation over here, we see that 9 resources have already been allocated. There were a total of 12 resources. So at this point in time, the number of free resources is 3. Now if we look at this 3 and if we see that which process, the needs of which process can be satisfied with these currently available resources. So if we look at the need uh, vector over here, then we see that 2 which is required by P1, this can be fulfilled by the free resources which are currently available. That means that if P1 requests for 2 more resources when it is executing, they will easily be satisfied by these currently available free resources which is 3 which is more than 2. So P1 can be executed first. Now if P1 executes and it terminates, then it will release all the resources that were allocated to it. Now there were two resources which were allocated to it. So when it terminates, it will release these resources and the number of available resources would be then 5. Now if we look at the availability of resources now. So this availability is 5. So if we look at the needs of the processes again, now we have only process P0 and P2. So the needs of P0 can be satisfied by these 5 resources. That means if P0 runs next, then its requirement can be satisfied by the available resources. Now if P0 runs and it terminates, then it will release its resources which are currently allocated to it. So five more resources will be released. Now the total number of free resources are 10. Now if P2 runs, then the requirement of P2 can also be satisfied. So we can say that we have a safe sequence over here with us, which is P1, P0, P2. So this safe sequence 
it satisfies the safety condition and we say that the requirements of the processes which are the needs of the processes can be satisfied by the currently available resources and the resources being held by the processes earlier in the sequence. So currently the system is in the safe state. Now let's see what can happen so that the system goes from the safe state to an unsafe state. Can the system go from a safe state to an unsta unsafe state? That is possible if a process requests for a resource and the system grants that resource to it. So let's assume that at time T1, P2 requests and is allocated one more resource. So he currently at time T0, the state of the system was this. This was the current allocation 5, 2 and 2. But now let's say at time T1, P2 requests for one more resource. So it is also allocated that resource. So now this additional resource has been given to process P2. So the current allocation when we look over here, now there are 10 resources which are already allocated. So the number of free resources are only 2 out of the total of 12. What is the need of the processes now? Maximum requirement was 10 current allocation is 5. So a possible future need would be of 5 resources for process P1. 4 was the maximum requirement current allocation is 2. So need is 2 for process P2. Uh, the maximum requirement was 9 current allocation is 3 and the need is now 6. Now let us see how this 2 free resources can whether the system is in a safe state or not. So if we look at the need, then we see that T1, this process T1 or let's say thread T1, this can run first. So thread T1 runs and when it terminates, it will free up the two resources which are currently allocated to it. So the number of free resources now would be 4. Now the need of process P0 is 5 and the need for process P2 is 6. The number of available resources now is 4. Neither the need of P0 nor the need of P2 can be satisfied. So now we don't have that safe sequence. So when the safe sequence does not exist, that means the system has gone into an unsafe state and there is a possibility of a deadlock. Whether the deadlock will happen or not, that is not sure because then it depends upon how T0 and T2 run and request the resources. But there is a possibility of resources and uh, of a deadlock and that, that means this allocation of resource, one resource to T, T2 has caused that problem and has led the system from a safe state to an unsafe state. So before allocation, if the algorithm had checked whether the safe sequence is available or not, then this resource would not have been granted. So this is how the avoidance algorithms work and we will look at them in more detail in future videos.